and welcome to another episode of Closing Deals in Heels. I'm your host, Kayla Hodges. And over my sales career, over my experience of being, you know, a waitress for 10 years, starting at IHOP, and then now being a place where I'm partnering with a seventh level and, you know, building a huge, huge global sales company and focusing primarily on women. I feel like so many times people are misconstrued with what it actually takes in order for you to reach levels of success and your life. And I feel like also at the same time, whenever you start learning and adapting skills, sometimes you get complacent. And that's what I see a lot with people that have done a lot of training, like a lot of sales training or, you know, training in a specific area or niche. All of a sudden it's like when they start knowing what they know or start making the money that they want to make, they start slowing it on down. And I ask myself, like, why do people do that? Why do people get complacent? Why do people lose their hunger, lose their passion, lose what's possible for them for their life? And I had a real come to Jesus moment with myself too. And I was like, Kayla, are you playing full out? And I think that these conversations with yourself are extremely important. Being able to look at yourself in the mirror and ask yourself, hi, am I doing the best that I could possibly do? And here's the thing, without a vision, the people perish. Without a vision as to where you're going, it's really hard for you to overcompensate with your lack of in order to amount to become the person that will execute that vision, especially when your vision doesn't grow. And oh my gosh, if five years ago, 10 years ago, if I told myself that I am where I am today, my, I would be in tears just in overwhelming and gratitude of what could possibly be possible for my life. The caveat is, is that I don't get to slow down. I get to dream a, bi- a bigger dream. I get to have a vision that's bigger than where I want to go. And I want to give some tactical things on this today in regards to actually, you know, putting in place things that you could do in order for you to reach higher levels of success in your life. And the first thing I want to talk about is a morning routine. A morning routine, people talk about this and it's some people say, oh, it's really important. Some people say I've made a lot of money without a morning routine. I just get up and go. And I feel like there has to be some type of balance here. Depending on who you are, depending on what what serves you or what doesn't serve you, it should be the plick dick on like what you set in sight for yourself in order for you to be able to absolutely always execute and when I first started doing a routine it it happened when I was in bodybuilding and I would wake up at four o'clock in the morning just to get my workout in and I would pray and I would spend time you know just in solitude at the time I wasn't drinking anything bad I was eating only really healthy food and I would do all that before I would even get my daughter up for school I would get my daughter up for school take her to school I would go to school myself because I was in college at the time and I would train personal train three times out of the week and then I would go to work as a waitress at night I would get off and then in my in between time I would be studying and studying and learning and I feel like I really found a discipline there of like wanting more and disciplining myself like oh tv's not going to support where I want to go and when I was a little girl my mom told me that when I was walking around I'm walking around everywhere I go with a big basket on me you walk around with a basket and every single thing that you see and put in in your mind and put in your heart like goes in your basket and whatever goes in your basket eventually comes out of your basket. And I think that's really appropriate when it comes to you wanting something more. Asking yourself if what you're putting in your basket on a daily basis, what you're doing, who you're hanging out with, what you're watching, what you're spending time with, is it pulling you closer to where you want to go or is it taking you further away and really having a real moment with yourself I want to loop back around to talking about a bigger vision your vision for what you want to create for yourself needs to be so big that it's kind of scary for you and I have big audacious goals I'm going to be really honest with you when I was a little girl my favorite quote was by Mary Kay Ash by Mary Kay Ash shoot for the moon so that you may land among the stars And I would always have big audacious goals and dreams. And I was like, you know, if I don't hit those, at least I get close. And I always thought like that. And it's funny, my, I would have family ask me like, why are you thinking like that? Or why, what do you want to do that? And my family, you know, I just felt like sometimes I felt misunderstood because of how big I was going and I was willing to do anything and everything to be the best version of me because I wanted to be successful so bad. And what I didn't realize is that once I hit a certain level of success, I would start to implode because I felt like I wasn't chasing some high of feeling worthy of making money or feeling worthy of people thinking that I was successful or feeling worthy of people paying attention to me or 
giving me the significance or the credibility that I so desperately desired and craved. It was like all the things that I had done, all the, the passion that I had of like trying to be something, all of a sudden it got ripped out on, underneath my feet when I started hitting certain levels of financial success or certain levels of business success. And then I'm like, what do I have here? to push myself forward. I felt myself feeling lonely and depressed and not knowing like what's next for me. I'm like, okay, great. So now I'm here. So now what? I remember my very first time buying a sports car. I bought a an Audi TTS. I named her Schwatz, which means black in German. And I loved that car. I remember getting that car and I was driving down the highway. I was going 130 miles an hour and I was like blasting like some really awesome music. And I was, oh, I was in love with that car for like 15 minutes. Because when I got home and I pulled into the driveway, this like empty, sick feeling came into my stomach. I'm like, now what? I don't know if you've ever felt like this. But ever felt like you're going, you're striving for something and striving and striving and striving. And then all of a sudden it's like, well, what's the next step? Or maybe you are obsessed with personal development and learning. And then all of a sudden you realize you're going to co different conferences and different conferences and you stop writing so many notes. It's like a level of desperation is taken away from you. And the thing is, is that when you're broke, when you're desperate, when you have nothing except for like your grit and your willingness to do whatever it takes to make it happen, when you don't have that, it's like, why? Because you don't need to do it anymore. So going back to your vision, the moment that I realized this is the moment it was like my daughter's birthday. I think it was her eighth birthday, eighth or ninth birthday. And I took her to Disney World and she had no idea I, I woke up that morning and I was like, we're going on a trip. And I was in Miami at the time. So we just drove to Orlando and she had no idea until we passed through the bridge and says Disney World. And I never gone to Disney World my whole life. My family could never afford to do anything like that. And we stayed in a Little Mermaid room. Like she has ears. I have ears. We're like running around the entire music park, screaming a tune, Akuna Matata, right? No worries. We're like singing. We're having a blast. It poured down rain one day and we like hid underneath like a, a covering. And we even skipped a line that had like 400 people in it because we were trying to shout shield ourselves from the rain we just made like a blast out of everything and I just remember after that trip feeling so fulfilled that I made her happy and then after that I was like okay I finally did it I was good mom I, I provided her ex an experience and then I felt like I wasn't striving for much anymore when something is outside of you when you're fulfilled with like the basic stuff right like getting the house or the car or finally being able to save up for whatever vacation you're trying to go on or like when like the the physical stuff right the stuff that you can only experience once comes to an end in terms of your fulfillment you have to expand more than just that there has to be something bigger than you and somebody asked me this once they were like if I was going to give you 20 million dollars and you had to invest it in one cause not not a charity but a cause like it wouldn't be Red Cross if you really cared about natural disasters but it would be natural disasters what would that be and I did this exercise and I really thought about it and I'm like man like if I could really help women that are in abusive situations or women that are being humanly trafficked like that would be everything and I really thought about it I remember going to Colombia and seeing like 14 to 16 year old girls that were being made prostitutes so that they can take care of their family and my heart just dropped <sighs> and you know I told myself I'm like my mission my mission is to go to third world countries and help women and kids escape domestic violent relationships escape human trafficking and go underground railroad style get them out of bad situations and give them tools like maybe how to sell in order to have a better different life and I have no idea how I'm going to do that yet. You know, I think a year and a half ago, we were able to raise about 200 something grand in order for us to help women and kids that had went through uh, sexual assault and, and to raise funds to go against, you know, their, their predators. And we were able to donate to the Texans women's, we were able to donate to the Texas Advocacy Project. It was an absolutely incredible experience. We even got a hundred foot wall mural donated. It was, it was absolutely incredible. And my whole point of saying this is that you don't have to know how you're going to do something to shoot for the moon and land among the stars, right? Having a mission that's so big for you and a why that's so big for you that you have to become more successful. You have to do more. You have to be more. You have to learn more. You have to acquire more skills so that you can do something like that is the only thing that's going to help get you really just start thinking more. Me getting my daughter to a next birthday is not going to fulfill me as much as 
me thinking about that there's a woman right now that is on her hands and knees praying and asking God for an opportunity and asking for somebody to come rescue her out of the situation that she's in. Like that fuels me. I want to become as big as possible. I'm willing to do the work. I'm willing to become the absolute best version of me. I'm willing to expand my heart, expand my skills. Um, if I, if my avenue of doing this is learning how to teach more and more and more and more women sales and eventually go into nonprofit spaces, like, like that is what we get to do. Right. And that means that my skills get to grow every single day. If I'm going to be the best, if I'm going to be the most successful at what they do in order for me to get the exposure so that I can help as many women as possible, like that's what I get to step into. And I say this to you because I want you to ask yourself, if you're going to take a minute to look in the mirror and ask yourself, are you doing the best are you really living the life that you feel like you want to live like why are you born why are you here are you really walking in the footsteps of what you know your destiny to be or are you slacking or is it hard or are you you know possibly you know distracted with things that are not serving you what is going in your basket what are you putting in there are you on track are you off track so here is some tactical stuff that I can give you in order for you to be on track. And it goes with a morning routine and I'm gonna give you a little bit of a night routine as well for your mindset as well as for sales. So my morning routine, every morning I wake up at 5 a.m. and I'm at the gym at 5.30. 5.30, I'm at the gym and I'm doing this not just for health benefits, right? But for my mindset to like start doing something during the day, getting my workout in and I get back to my house, right? Around 6.30 or 6.40, I take a shower and I start meetings with my clients at 7 a.m. So I'm like going. After that, you know, make sure to get my daughter to school. I come back and I have 30 minutes. I don't block anything on the calendar. And those 30 minutes, I am praying if I didn't get that done earlier in the morning or I am cooking my breakfast. I like to listen to my music. I like to sit down there and I don't check my phone. That's like my 30 minutes a day that I get to just eat and be with myself and like have my coffee and like pray if I need to or like just get grounded for the day. And then I go straight into my routine. During the gym, I'm always listening to something that's going to empower me. Whether it is something motivational, I love Eric Thomas or Billy Allsbrooks, Coach Payne, Tony Robbins. Like I love somebody in my ear, especially someone yelling in my ear in the gym telling me that I can do more. That's really, really helpful for me. And you know, whatever is going to be helpful for you, something that's empowering you. Or I'm listening to some type of book or some type of training so that I can get my mind ready for the day right? Whatever is coming in is going to come out. I need to make sure my cup is so full that it's overflowing so that I can pour out. I'm trying to figure out if there's anybody that I need to clear things up with and my integrity in all the areas of my life, right? And making sure that I'm good moving into the day, moving forward. And I get my stuff done. I'm working. I'm taking intentional breaks throughout the day to make sure I'm honoring and take care of myself. I go pick up my daughter every day from school. That time's really important for me. And I make sure that I'm asking her about her day and I'm spending time with her and I'm looking at her and then I kind of go back to work and do my thing. And, you know, during the week we have different things set up in order for us to be able to be nutrient ourselves, right? So my daughter has a ballet and hip hop on Mondays. On Tuesday, she has counseling with a trauma therapist because of some things that she's been through. On Wednesday, she has some cheerleading and I have a dance class that I go to at night. And on Thursday, you know, we have family night. Friday, we have clear eye date night. You know, Saturday, like I have my personal date nights and then Sunday's rest day. And every single night when I go to bed, right, I, I take a minute to analyze my day. First thing is I make sure that I have checked off if I'm in alignment with every area. If there's anything that I need to do, I make sure that I write it down to do it. I check my calendar for the next day. I know what's coming up. If I'm in a sales role, I made sure that every single person I talk to the next day has been called, communicated with, talked to. Like we are triple confirmed. If they did not confirm with me, I'm removing their call from my calendar if they had not texted. And I'm going to text somebody three, four times to make sure that they've talked to me. If they if they didn't respond, then they're probably not going to show up on my calendar. I'm going to remove them and give them a warning with love and then remove them from my calendar. I'm going to make sure EOD reports are always filled out. I can't do anything at night unless my EOD reform. I can't do anything at night unless my EOD form is filled out because something internally inside me is like, oh my God, I need to get this done. And then I ask... If there's anything that's frustrating me for me to just let it go, for me to give it to God, 
let it go. And I ask every single night for God to make me a better woman, for me to learn the things that I need to learn in order to pour out to others, for me to be stronger, wiser, better, healthier, a better mom. And I ask and I thank God for every single thing in my life, the people in my life, the situations in my life, the opportunities in my life. And and I go to bed and I start over the next day. And that's just a little glimpse into my world. And in the morning, you know, I message all my people that I'm having a sales call with, right? The reason why I'm telling you all this, you know, and maybe this is useful information or maybe it's not, but ask yourself if you're going to look at your calendar right now. My calendar is so full and it's color coded. Even my breaks have a color on my calendar. If you looked at that calendar, if anyone else looked at that calendar and they were to say, does this person have what it takes in order to be successful? Would they say yes or would they say no? Every single thing, it comes to the person that you look at in the mirror. Are you willing to take the action? Are you willing to believe in yourself? Are you willing to do what it takes? It comes down to you. What are you putting in your basket today? What are you putting in there? Are, is it going towards where you want to go or is it pulling you farther away? Are the people in your life pulling you towards you where you want to go or are they pulling you farther away? It's up to you. I really wish somebody came to me five, ten years ago and shook me up and was like, hi, like this whole possibility of what you can do is in your hands. And if you make the right decisions and you move forward and you believe in yourself and you don't give up, you will have it. And it took me falling on my face many, many times to figure it out. You have every single thing that it takes in order for you to be successful in whatever you're going after. I honor you. You got this. If you can take some time to make sure you send this podcast to anyone that you feel like it would resonate, I honor you. I appreciate you. Make sure you subscribe below, and I will see you on the next episode, babe.